Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over a new product, not new to the market, just new to me. However, it's part of a project that I'm working on. And to be a little bit more specific, that project is revamping my SPR build from 2018 or 2019. And I'll roll in a picture if I can find one of what it originally looked like. It went through a couple different iterations. Um, and it's been a good build for the, the money that I spent at the time that I did. It's been very accurate. I've only taken it out to 600 yards, but it's super, super consistent all the way out to 600 yards on six inch plates. So it's one MOA away all the way out. No problems whatsoever. Even my wife who does not shoot very much was super accurate, like scarily accurate going out to 600 yards and all I did was coach her through basically telling her what her mill dial were on, on the optic and she was putting first round impacts all the way out to 600 pretty much on 10 inch steel plates so it was very capable however there were some areas that I didn't spend more money than maybe other people thought I should have or other people would have spent um, but again, the name of the game at the time was building a budget SPR. Now that I've gotten a little bit more into, let's just say, competing in these type of uh, events, like you've seen in, in one of my previous videos, where I went out to Ohio and shot a ruck match that went out to 500 yards, I want to start investing back into this SPR build. So, that rail is the Cross Machine Tool UHPR Mod 2 HDX. Yes, I know it's a long name. Not sure what that is supposed to stand for. However, it seems to be a really good rail. There is videos, well, there are videos on YouTube, but there's only a handful. I think there's one for the... Uh, original UHPR that was done by Mr. Guns and Gear maybe six or seven years ago. And then there's another YouTuber who had a couple videos done within the last year <clears throat> on this particular rail and issues that he ran into. They were ne all negative videos. Sucks that he had to deal with that. I don't know what the deal is right there. And I, I you know, I don't want to speak ill of him. I don't know what the deal is, but... Either which way, there was a few videos done. Um, despite those videos, everything else that I could research, people speak very highly of this company and their products. And uh, there was recently a sale going on for Labor Day through Primary Arms. So I picked one up for well, damn near 80 bucks off or something like that. So before we show you the rail, let's talk a little bit about what it's replacing. And that is this rail right here, which is the AIM Sports Wraith rail. I believe this is the first generation rail. They have a uh, Wraith Generation 2. This is a 15-inch handguard. Seven-side M-lock made of 6061 aluminum, if I'm correct. And it does have a steel barrel nut, which is something that I really appreciate. As well as anti-rotation tabs, regardless of how thin or cheap those may seem still going to do its job unless it takes a super hard hit um was a good rail had no issues with it but it was a very inexpensive rail and aim sports isn't really known for the best quality stuff while it did its job you can see it's got quite a bit of use on it you can see all the, the wear marks on it all throughout for me using it i wanted to step it up and step up this build in, in multiple ways. So, without further ado, let's jump into this. So, to reiterate, this is the, cr the Cross Machine Tool UHPR Mod 2 HDX. It is a 15 inch rail that's made of 600, uh, 6000 series aluminum, probably 6061. Uh, it is type 3 hard coat anodized. It does utilize a, a 7075 T6 aluminum barrel nut instead of a steel barrel nut that is type 3 hard coat anodized uh, this is something that I wasn't entirely sure about 
with the the barrel nut and I'll pull it out in a second because of its uh, it being aluminum but there's plenty of high-end manufacturers that use aluminum and they've done it to great success so I have no reason to believe that this is going to be any type of detriment to this particular rail <laughs> the hardware that it uses for the lockup system right here is made of 17.4 pH steel and uh, it does include on the rail steel sling sling swivel sockets that are anti-rotation so they only uh, turn a quarter turn and they are um, nitrided so very nice rail they have a claimed weight of 13 ounces for this we'll see I have a scale um, let's see if the scale works on this this stuff here but let me move this out of the way you have your mounting instructions on all that other stuff uh, pretty handy and then in the last thing in the box that you're gonna have here is your barrel nut tool which is a nice feature because a lot of companies don't offer a barrel nut tool you have to pay for an extra and one of the really nice things about it is that it does include the max foot pounds on the tool itself so there's no questioning what to go to one thing I will say is that if you read the instruction, it says 5270 max uh, foot pounds for the torque on the barrel nut. So I think that that's a really good, um, really good feature there. Gives you a little bit of leeway. On to the rail. It is a beautifully done rail, machine rail. Let's see if this wants to, there we go. So seven side M lock. I have used the M locks at the the one and and whatnot or 130 and all those other positions with great success will I use it on this one I don't know but I do like the aesthetics of seven side M lock I do like the the addition of these cutie cups being steel aluminum will wear out over time it's just it is what it is and I do like this lockup system so let me take this the rest of the way out and I'll show you the barrel nut and what the wedges look like. So this is technically a type of wedge lock system because it uses two wedges in a almost a pinch style. Let me get this one out. Come on. That one's in there. There you go. It does not want to go there we go okay so you can see that it locks up pretty tight apparently but as far as the hardware is concerned you have these two little wedges with these included or protruded notches that come together like so and they interface with the barrel so as the barrel goes in this way into the receiver you have this notch that these two will line up with and they only go one way because these notches aren't exactly center if you look at that you can see it's not it looks like it's center but it's not so when you line it up in there lines up like so right so you have it like that lines up like so and it pulls together and pulls that rail super tight against this pretty unique mounting uh mounting option that they chose to go with so i'm pretty excited to see how this is going to work a couple other things that i think that they do really well on this is the inclusion of anti-rotation tabs and these anti-rotation tabs fairly beefy but if I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera, but on side, inside they have like these protruding pieces that kind of pull uh, are on the inside of the tabs. And stand by. For the upper receiver, when you pull them in, they're not going to sit. It, it's going to feel like it doesn't want to go in. You just got to give it a little bit of a pop or hit it in like so 
and it'll sit flush. It's not gonna do it right now because I don't have the barrel nut, but again, as the you see here, the barrel nut. I'll slide this on real quick. I'll thread this on, and then, and then it sits flush and locks up super tight, which is one thing that I truly do appreciate. And uh, to speak on that other YouTuber, that is one of the things that they, they complained about, stating that the tabs were, weren't machined properly, so they wouldn't fit on. I don't know if it was a case where it just won't go on or it doesn't go on all the way, and he didn't do that. Whatever the case is, no shots at him, not trying to start any type of internet controversy uh, that I honestly don't care for. Just pointing that out, if anybody go comes across that video, they're probably gonna see that video before they see this one, but that's one cool feature. The other cool feature is that they notch this little area out right here, and that is for the, the pin for the ejection port cover. And that's so you don't have to worry about using um, shims to, to get the handguard to clear that pin. Some people, I've done it in the past on other, other builds where you just grind that down a little bit. You don't have to worry about using shims. This, you don't, this little feature you ain't got to worry about doing anything like that. Anyway, guys, I spent a long enough time talking about the rail. Um, I think it's going to be a really good rail. I can't wait to get this thing all the way back together. I did have a color scheme for this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go through with it because then that's going to be an additional couple hundred dollars in sear coating. And I don't know if that's worth it. And I might just end up rattle canning it and doing a... Uh, some type of camel job, aren't it? But either which way, I guess you consider this a part one for my SPR project, SPR revamp. So hang around, check back in. You'll see more videos to come following this particular uh, series. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys down on the next video.